festival in which kid filmmakers create short movies that tell the entire stories of Newbery winning books in about 90 seconds. I'm your host, James Kennedy, the founder of the 90 Second Newbery Film Festival. And here to help me co-host is the author of The Tiny Mansion and many other great books for kids and adults, Mr. Keir Graff. Thank you, James. I'm so excited to be here. And this is a particularly auspicious year because it's the 100th anniversary of the Newbery Award. That's right. The Newbery Award was established by the American Library Association in 1922, exactly 100 years ago. Some say on this very night. Do you believe in the legend? Legend? You don't know about it? <laughs> I assume that's why we were doing this in a creepy, empty old building. According to the legend, on the 100th anniversary of the Newbery Award, at the stroke of midnight, John Newbery himself will rise from the grave to wreak vengeance on anyone who has ever disrespected a Newbery winning book. Oh, Kier, what a load of applesauce. You believe those old wives' tales? That's just something librarians tell their children at night to scare them into reading Johnny Tremaine. What's wrong with Johnny Tremaine? <laughs> Get real, Kier. Just because a book wins an award doesn't mean it's some immortal tome of literature. You gotta admit that a lot of those Newbery books, especially the older ones, have attitudes that are dated. To put it mildly. Wait, James, are you canceling the Newbery? I'm not canceling the Newbery. Well, James, don't do this. Not today, of all days. <laughs> Here, get a hold of yourself. A lot of these Newbery winning books are stinkers. And that's what the 90 second Newbery is all about. I encourage kids to make movies that could even make fun of the books. Oh no, it's midnight. It's happening. I'm sure there's a, a rational explanation. Take it all back, James. Say you didn't mean it. Say that the 92nd Newbery Film Festival is all about glorifying these books, not making fun of them. I refuse. Wait, what's that? Coming down the hall. Just as the prophecy said, the books are rising up to take their vengeance against us. And then John Newbery himself will appear. We can take shelter over there. Bookstore. Boys and girls of every age, would you like some clickbaity rage? Come with us and you will see, these the books of Newberry. This is Newberry, this is Newberry, new kid and tale of Despero. Is the Newberry problematic, could it be frog and toad and maniac Maggie and Holes? Of these books, take another look, should they even have a new Newberry? I'm the book with animal abuse. The penguins used to dance, no no, at the loops. I am the book that has a kid who smokes and has hallucinations. Newberry revoked. This, this is Newberry, this is Newberry, 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 Newberry. In each book they call great, we can find something to castigate. Newberry is ripe for cancelling, every single one of them has something wrong. Somewhere on the internet, there's someone who is upset, someone's always ready now to pounce with glee. This is Newberry, not everyone's cup of tea. Feel aggrieved? Then let's get pee. Charlotte's Web, Elderfoot, the Witch of Buckwood Ponds and Holes might seem okay, but they must go. Everybody scream, everybody scream at the bookstop, Newberry. I am the book with the misleading name. There are no dolphins except on just one page. I am the book you can't comprehend. I am the book that people like to ban. I am the book with pictures badly drawn. I want my year instead of trumpet of the swan? This is Newberry, Newberry. this is Newberry. Newberry, 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 Newberry! Gangsters portrait with sympathy. Kids in work camps, that's the funny. This title is too depressing. This title is too long and puzzling. 
All these books, aren't they dubious? Everyone's waiting for the next pile on. Newberry John, whom you thought had gone, is back with the vengeance for the schools who mock and shine. This is Newberry. Everybody's free. Won't you please make way for a very special guy? John Newberry, ghoul of the libraries. Everyone hail to John Newberry. John Newberry! I hear there are some Newberry movies. Can I watch them? Sure, John Newberry. Can we have some of that popcorn? Absolutely not. When it's your turn on the chair, you'll stand at attention and forget about who you were when you walked through that door. You came as a lump of clay, a blank canvas. But when my man is done with you, they'll want to post you up in a museum. There's a dude to the left of you. He looks presidential. Maybe he's a CEO of a tech company that manufactures cool. He's a boss. That's how important he looks. There's a dude to the right of you that looks majestic. There are thousands of angels waiting to guide him. That's how important he looks. When your barber is done, you'll feel like a million dollars and some change. And when you see the cut yourself in that hand-held mirror, you'll smile a really big smile. You'll put the money in his hand without even expecting change back. You know why? Because you'll leave out of the shop every single time, feeling the exact same way. Magnificent. Flawless. Like royalty. Hello, world. Fantastic! That movie was based on Derek Barnes' 2018 Newbery Honor book, Crown, an Ode to the Fresh Cut, a picture book about how good it feels to get a haircut. It really nailed the confident, swaggering vibe of that book, and I, I really love those uh, cameos by George Clooney and Keanu Reeves. The next movie is based on another picture book, William Steig's 1983 Newbery Honor book, Dr. DeSoto. It's about a mouse dentist and his wife, who decide to take care of a fox with a toothache, even though there's a risk the fox might eat them. This movie, by Mr. Johnson's fifth grade film club from the Grant Center for the Expressive Arts in Tacoma, Washington, tells the story with a twist. The dentist husband and his wife are normal humans. And the fox is a vampire. <laughs> Dr. DeSoto was the greatest dentist in town. He only had one rule. I cannot treat you, sir. Haven't you read my sign? Please help me. I need my tooth fixed. Go somewhere else. I already asked Dr. Jekyll and Dr. Frankenstein. No one will help me. Just a moment. That poor vampire, what should we do? Let's risk it. Bless your delicious heart. 
Ah, oh, you have to invite me in. It's a rule. Come, Come in. in. Okay, open up and I'll take a look. Would it be shabby of me to bite him? Pliers. Ah! It's out. Take a look. Those things don't work for me. Okay, please come back for your new tooth tomorrow at 9 a.m. sharp. Can we make that 9 p.m.? How foolish of us to trust a vampire. But once we start our job, we finish it. We must do something to protect ourselves. I think I have an idea. Okay, now we will put in your new tooth. Say, ah. Uh... <sighs> Just a joke. Be serious, we have work to do. Oh, I love it. I really shouldn't bite them. On the other hand, how can I resist? Wait, we're not done yet. I have something here that'll keep your teeth from chipping. And you'll never have to see us again. No one will ever see you again. <laughs> Got it! You tricked me! So funny. I love the creative twist that this movie put on the story, especially with all of its vampire-specific jokes. But wait! That's not the only amazing version of Dr. DeSoto that we got this year. Here's another one, and it's by the students of Francis Rhodes Elementary in San Antonio, Texas. They tell the story entirely with shadow puppets. Dr. DeSoto, working on one of his many animal patients. He is known for his delicate fingers and drill. The animals do not even, even feel him working. All finished. How does your tooth feel? Much better. Thank you, doctor. Not all animals were welcomed at Dr. DeSoto's as the sign says until one day. I cannot treat you, sir. Haven't you read my sign? Those were beautifully crafted puppets, and I love the voiceover performances of all the characters. That movie was so good. I always appreciate it when filmmakers find creative twists to the original story. This next movie is based on Katherine Patterson's 1978 Newbery Medal winner, Bridge to Terabithia. We all know the story. A boy, Jess, makes friends with a new girl in town, Leslie, one of the only kids who can run faster than him. Together, they imagine a fantasy land in the woods they call 
Terabithia, which it accessed by a rope swing over the river. But one day, when Leslie goes to Terabithia alone, the rope swing breaks and she dies. Here, Aurelia of Novi, Michigan, reimagines Bridge of Terabithia as a shoe commercial. Tired of old, clunky running shoes slowing you down? Try Terabithia tennis shoes. With them, you're guaranteed to run faster. Meet Leslie. She has Terabithia tennis shoes. How did you do that? I have Terabithia tennis shoes. See? Explore the wonderful world of Terabithia. With these shoes, you could be royalty. Want my shoes? Then we can both be royalty. Because Leslie didn't have Terabithia tennis shoes, she died. If you don't want to be like Leslie, buy our shoes today. <laughs> Terabithia tennis shoes, buy them today before they're gone like Leslie. Buy them today before they're gone like Leslie. I love that ice cold last line. And I especially loved how you made the shoes spin around. It's very creative and funny. A Bridge to Terabithia won the Newbery Medal over 40 years ago. So let's look at a movie based on a more recent Newbery Medal winner. 2020 medal winner, New Kid by Jerry Craft. It's a graphic novel about a working class black kid, Jordan, and how he makes his way in a school mostly of privileged white kids. It's a story about fitting in, but also finding your own voice and sticking up for yourself. And here it's presented in animated form by Maya from Green Bay, Wisconsin. New Kid, written by Jerry Kraft and animated by me, Maya. Jordan Banks is a middle school student who loves drawing cartoons about his experiences, but he feels like he has no control over his life as his parents send him to prestigious Riverdale Academy School, aka RAD. Its huge campus and wealthy student body are a world apart from this Washington Heights neighborhood in New York City. The campus impresses him, but he gets lost easily and must deal with a bully, Andy, who mocks his height and makes stereotypical comments about race. As the year progresses, Jordan takes classes, plays sports, and draws. However, he deals with passive forms of racism, such as having people call him by the names of other black students or look at him when topics like slavery and financial aid come up. In Washington Heights, he faces the opposite problem as his education pushes him away from his old friends. Jordan becomes friends with Liam and Drew. Drew acts out in retaliation to Andy's bullying and the racist acts of their homeroom teacher, Miss Brawl. Jordan has his ups and downs throughout the school year, and even has his moments where he stands up for what he believes in. But in the end, Jordan graduates the year with his friends more- I'm so impressed, Maya. And if you check out the original graphic novel, you'll see that she really captures Jerry Craft's style and brings it to life through her animation. The next movie is based on Kimberly Brubaker Bradley's 2016 Newbery Honor book, The War That Saved My Life. The setting? London, 1939. The Blitz. Nine-year-old Ada has a twisted foot and has never left a one-room apartment because her mother hates her. When Ada's little brother, Jamie, is shipped out of London to escape the German bombing, Ada runs away to join him. In the countryside, Ada and Jamie are assigned to live with Mrs. Smith, who says she doesn't want children. Nevertheless, they all learn to get along. In the countryside, Ada gets crutches, learns how to ride a horse, makes a friend, and even helps to catch a German spy. In the end, Ada and Jamie are able to cut ties with their horrible mother, and they make a new family with Mrs. Smith. This movie is by Jack Wright and Company of Lookout Mountain, Georgia. <laughs> Get away from that window before someone sees you! 
I'm sending your brother to the country before the Germans start bombing us, but I'm not sending you. No one will want you because of your foot. Get in the cabinet! Miriam hates me because I have a deformed foot. She tells everyone I have mental problems, and that's why I can't leave the flat. She doesn't know I spend all summer long to walk. I'm going to evacuate London with my brother, too. We came from London. We're dirty and uneducated. Will you take care of us? No, I'm sad and I'm not good with children. Please? Okay. What's wrong with your foot? We can fix it, but we'll need her mother's permission. And it'll be expensive. Here, have some crutches. I taught myself how to ride a horse. I'm rich and I can ride a horse. Here, I'll take it home and we'll be friends. And you can work part-time in our stables. Look, a German spy. I am not a spy. That's enough proof for me. I'm taking my children home so I can keep neglecting them when I am not being cruel. What do you want? I want the kids back. You don't have to spend any money. Eh, I never loved them anyway. Trapping the missiles. The house was blown up while we were in London. We survived and I love you. We love you too. That movie was really incredible. I love the snappy dialogue and that scene when the house gets bombed was pretty impressive. I always love it when people blow things up for these movies. The next movie is based on Holly Black's 2014 honor book, Doll Bones. It's about three friends, Zach, Alice, and Poppy, who play a role-playing game with action figures, and in particular, a mysterious antique doll of a girl they think might be haunted. When Zach's dad throws out his action figures, saying he's too old for such childish games, this sets off a series of events in which the three friends go on a great quest, for they come to believe they must return the antique haunted doll to, the gr to its grave in another town. This version is by the Leland Street Players of Chicago, and it tells the story of doll bones in the style of the Netflix show Stranger Things. Instead of a doll of a girl, it's a doll of the Demogorgon that got loose from the lab. Congratulations to the actors on this one. Uh, the performances really make the movie. Check out how the character of Zack's mom really channels that unhinged Winona Ryder energy. Demogorgon. Aren't you a little old to be playing with dolls? Buzz off, turkey! I gotta go home anyway. It's late. My grandma's gonna whoop me. Doesn't this Demogorgon ever freak you out? Yeah. Sometimes I feel like it's watching me. Look! Did it just move? It's like it wants something. But what does it want? I'm home. Are you safe? My son, are you safe? Maybe I'm out of my mind. Maybe I am crazy. But God help me. You are my son. And no one will ever take you away from me. Yeah.
action figures. Or flush your dolls down the toilet. You're too old to play with them. Those were mine. They were part of my game with my friends. Ah, uh, don't be so dramatic. Grow up. I hate you. What I do? Can anyone tell me what's wrong with him? Can a single person in this room tell me what's wrong with my boy? Where's your action figures? Don't you want to play? We're too old to be playing this. It's dumb kid stuff. I know her. I've seen her in my dreams. I have too. She wants to swing the Demogorgon to the upside down. I can't go to the upside down. My grandma will whoop me. You have no time. It's coming. Go. Where is the upside down? You kids lost. You need some help? Take a hike, bucko! What is that monster? <laughs> ah! Let's get off this bus! We can't run forever. But the Demogorgon will keep chasing us if we don't get to the upside down. You promised we'd be home by now. My grandma's gonna whoop me. Too. I put out an, an APV at the station. Where's my son? Where's my son? My son! It's my son! Wait, I know! Where did my son go? You're talking the Christmas lights? <laughs> Don't you dare patronize me! If you can't handle this, then get out of my house! I can feel it. The upside down is just across this river. A river? My grandma's gonna whoop me! Guys, let's just go home. Or we could steal that boat. This river is too rough. We can make it. No, we can't. And it's all the fault of the stupid Demogorgon. lost everything. But we still have the Demogorgon. The Demogorgon. You and your stupid quests. You promised we'd be home hours ago. My grandma's gonna whoop me. Whatever. You love Zack. And I can't believe you think that you're too cool to play with us. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you? I don't know. Wait. That building. I saw it in my vision of the upside down. Me too. We have to go there. In the book, isn't there a part with a donut shop and a library? We're already way over 90 seconds. We have no time for that.
just mine! My beautiful son! Come here, Alice, you're overdue for a whooping. I'm gonna whoop you like you never believe. Whoop, 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 whoop. Fantastic work, everyone. The performances were hilarious, and the special effects and soundtrack really made it feel like Stranger Things. The next movie is based on Tommy DePola's 2000 Newbery Honor book, 26 Fairmount Avenue. It's an autobiographical book about Tommy's childhood memories in the 1930s, when his family is building their new house at 26 Fairmount Avenue. A lot happens. A hurricane hits town. Tommy eats chocolate with his nana, only to find out the hard way that they have eaten chocolate laxative. Tommy gets anger at the movie Snow White because it's not enough like the book, and he tries to skip kindergarten. These kids at the Grant Center for the Expressive Arts in Tacoma, Washington, tell the story as a musical. Here's a story of a boy named Tommy who was moving to a new house very soon. He has a very big family, not so simple, just listen. Single wings. We just named two stormy things. Brooke and Brenda's start of spring. You know it's stormy? Everything! At my nana's house, she's out of candy. Not in the box, not in the room. Found a seat in the bathroom. Found some chocolate. It wasn't chocolate. Then there was thunder. One time my mom took me and my brother to the movie Snow White. I read the book so I knew how it went, but Walt Disney did not do it right. It's the worst movie ever, it does not even match. I cannot believe they stick it to a heart. I got so mad I had to yell, ha, little boy, sit down. Your little dumb kid, we read next year. Okay, bye, I'll see you next year. I'll come back in first grade. Goodbye. No way, come back, please. I need my job. <laughs> That was so good. I'm a sucker for a musical, and I really liked how they rewrote the lyrics to well-known songs to tell the plot of the book. And that choreography, especially at the end, amazing. The next movie is based on Hugh Lofting's 1923 Newbery Medal winner, The Voyages of Dr. Doolittle. It's by Ian Gabriel Sinclair of Rochester, New York, who has been making claymation and stop-motion 90-second Newbery movies for years. He wasn't able to make a full movie of Dr. Doolittle this year because he started college early at age 15, but he was able to put together a message from Dr. Doolittle in his signature stop-motion style. Ian Gabriel, take it away. Animalou's Bulletin. Dr. Doolittle speaks.
Hello. Doolittle speaking. Dr. Doolittle. This year marks the 100 year anniversary of that most prestigious award, the Newbery Medal of Honor. My second book, The Voyages of Dr. Doolittle, was the second book awarded the title Newbery Medal Winner. And this fellow is Ian Sinclair, the creator of this film. After becoming a full-time college student at the age of 14, Ian had the time to create a full-scale book adaptation, so I'm speaking for him. Thus I invited some of my colleagues, retired actors from Ian's previous animated films. Unfortunately, we are no longer in the best condition. They're cute little zombies, aren't they? Ian wanted me to give a special tribute to Mr. James Kennedy, the founder of this great festival, whose critically acclaimed new book, Dare to Know, I cannot stop reading, and will continue to resume, if I can find my glasses. An ode to Mr. Kennedy on piano. C-flat. Fantastic claymation. Ian Gabriel never disappoints, and I was charmed and nostalgic when he brought out the clay figures from his previous entries in the 92nd Newberry. And thanks for sneaking in a mention of my new book. The next movie is based on Rebecca Stead's 2010 Newbery Medal winner, When You Reach Me. It's about Miranda, a girl in 1979 New York City. Every day Miranda passes The Laughing Man, a homeless guy who sits and giggles by the mailbox at her corner. Things get weird when Miranda starts receiving mysterious notes that seem to know her future. And her best friend Sal gets punched by the school eccentric, Marcus, who likes to talk about time travel. But is the person who is writing Miranda those notes actually the laughing man who is in fact a time-traveling adult version of Marcus? We find out in the movie's climax when the laughing man saves Sal and sacrifices himself in a car crash. This movie, by the Compass Homeschool Initiative of Tulsa, Oklahoma, tells the story not from Miranda's point of view, but from the point of view of the mysterious and kind of creepy laughing man. When I was younger, I was given a letter to build a time machine from the future. And now, I have these letters to help me guide me on my way to save the life of some young lad. Time travel. 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 <laughs> This is Miranda, the girl that gave me the letters. This is Sal, Miranda's ex-best friend. There was some drama there, I think, involving basketball. This is young me. I had some issues. Write me a letter. Tell me where your house key is. Thanks. Tell me a story. All the deets. Our little secret. Thanks. You don't believe me? I know your future. Yawns do be dope though. Thanks. Hilarious. 
The switch in perspective from Miranda to the Laughing Man really brings out the creepiness of that character and makes the story much funnier. Great work. Let's time travel again, a hundred years into Newberry Past, to a mostly forgotten Newberry Honor winner from 1922, Cedric the Forester. It's about Sir Dickon Mountjoy, a 12th century nobleman's son. He meets the commoner, Cedric, who lives in a cottage in the forest. Dickon and Cedric become best friends and they have many adventures. The thing about this book, though, is that it's told in old-fashioned language that might be hard for the modern reader to follow. But don't worry, our next filmmaker, Max Peck of Brandon, Vermont, has a solution for that. That was a blithe spring morning when the messenger from the king brought to mine own father the order to join the army at Lincoln for the great expedition into Scotland. The armors were hammering and riveting in the courtyard, making a most merry din. And hold on, oh, hold, hold on a minute. Nobody can understand a word you're saying. What dost thou imply by such uncouth interference? Speak, nay. See, that's what I'm talking about. Nobody uses the words dost, thou, or knave. Nobody. Such impertinence as thou art spewing shall not remain long unpunished. Okay, how about this? You tell your story, and I'll translate for all the people listening at home. A most worthy proposal, and it is indeed an honor to oblige. Yes, 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 I, I get it. You're glad. Now keep it moving. This is a timed program. So twas that mine own father went forth to aid our king. Dickens' dad went on a business trip. In his absence, however, the wicked wolf of Carlton did lay siege to our valorous castle. A bad guy attacked. Our archers perform it admirably until mine own father hath returned to halt the conflict. Dickens' dad came back and the bad guy went away. Carlton hath met his demise from a wound at the siege and his son attempted to wrongfully murder me. The bad guy died, and bad guy Jr. tried to kill Dickon. But I was saved by the good Cedric the Forester, who is later becometh mine own squire. Cedric saved Dickon, so Dickon gave him a job. We two were later both honorably knighted due to our bravery and heroics amidst the heat of battle. The two of them got job promotions. Many were our adventures with fiends and ruffians of foul deeds, but Cedric's wit didst remain unmatched for the duration of tall. They got in lots of trouble, and Cedric got them out of it. At last we were placed upon a board to draft it a document for the corrupt King John to sign at which hour he would finally sue for peace. King John was a bad guy, so Dickon and Cedric were helping to write a bill to make sure he would stop doing his bad things. Cedric did want this document to contain rights for all our good people, not only for the nobility. No, no, that one made sense. Keep going. The abbot of Moberly vehemently opposed this, but after much discussion and some alternative negotiation techniques, the abbot did consent and the legislation was duly passed and signed by the unfaithful king. Cedric blackmailed somebody and got what he wanted. Thus ensued afterward, forthwith a period of the utmost equanimity, an era of parody commensurateness for all our Excelsior people. Okay, even I don't know what that, do you even know what that means? It is a most distinctive possibility. All right, I'm done. Happy 100th anniversary, Newbury Book Awards, and happy 100th birthday to the book, Cedric the Forester. Yes, yes, a most marvelously joyous century of celebration to both the good Newbury Book at the Awards and the literary telling of Cedric the Forester. Amazing work, Max. Very funny, too. I love how you used camera trickery to play every role yourself, and the costumes and the performance styles kept all the characters distinct. Quite clever. Now, Cedric the Forester is a pretty obscure Newbery book. One of the most well-known is Louis Sacker's 1999 medal winner, Holes. It's about Stanley Yelnats, a boy who was falsely arrested for a crime he didn't commit and sent to Camp Green Lake, a juvenile prison where the warden makes boys dig holes all day. This version of Holes, by the Rivers and Roads ALC in Nature School of Oklahoma City, tells the story with a science fiction twist. I give you 
Black holes. Believers in Rose Films. <laughs> I hope you can measure. Don't listen to him, you'll be fine. Come on, let's go dig our hole. Nah, we on the red planet digging it up. We done dug so many holes, we just can't get enough. Everybody with a shovel in your hand, let me see. Put it in the ground and dig it, now you and me. What we looking for, something unique. And if we keep on digging, we gon' find what we seek. We gon' find the cute puppies of destruction won't get in the way. Now, everybody grab your shovel and dig away. Dig it up, dig it up, let's go. Dig it up, dig it up, let's go.
baby. We're gonna be trapped up here forever and then there will never be any black holes ever again. That's a good thing. They're probably dead by now. I was actually tricking them to jump into the black hole. And plus, who would ever be silly enough to jump into a black hole? Uh-huh, yeah, for sure, yeah. Not me. Hey guys, need a ride? Get in quick before they come. I thought you were dead. You thought you were dead. How'd you get another ride? Don't ask questions, just hop in. Oh, guys, when we get back, do you guys want to dig some holes? No! no! Now, we on the red planet digging it up We done duck so many holes, we just can't get enough Everybody with a shovel in your hand, let me see Put it in the ground and dig it, now you and me What we looking for? Something unique And if we keep on digging, we gon' find what we seek Them cute puppies of destruction won't get in the way Now, everybody grab your shovel and dig away Dig it up, dig it up, let's go Dig it up, dig it up, let's go Dig it up, dig it up, let's go Go. Keep on digging, we gon' dig some more. Now, dig it up, dig it up, let's go. Dig it up, dig it up, let's go. Come on, dig it up, dig it up, let's go. Keep digging till we got to go. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Bear, stupendous. I love the lightsaber battle, the handmade spaceship, the green screen work, and all the fantastic performances. You really took advantage of the beautiful Oklahoma outdoors, and I was impressed that you made all the songs yourself, including that last one. The next movie is based on Joseph Crumgold's 1960 Newbery Medal winner, Onion John. It tells the story of 12-year-old Andy and his friendship with an eccentric hermit, Onion John, who lives in the outskirts of town in a stone hut furnished with bathtubs. Onion John speaks his own weird language, he only eats onions, and he has odd beliefs in good spirits and bad spirits. The people in town try to help Onion John, but Andy learns sometimes it's better just to let weird people be weird. This movie is weird too, because in it, Onion John is played by an actual onion. And it totally works! This is Onion John, an immigrant from Europe who lives in the small town of Serenity, where he lives in his stone hut that he fills with bathtubs. This is Andy, the only person in Serenity who understands or cares about Onion John. In Onion John's world, good spirits live among the clouds, while bad spirits are blown out by smoke. Onion John's house sure is old. Yeah, we should probably build him a new house. They took down his house and built a new one. Here's your new house, Onion John. Onion John was so amazed by the technology in his new house that he set a newspaper on fire and it burnt down his house. He didn't like the house in the first place. Get out of here! No, Onion John, don't go! Why? Goodbye! That was brilliant. I particularly like the stop motion of the good spirits and the bad spirits. And the way the faces on the onion and the apples changed depending on how they felt was a great detail. The next movie is based on Lois Lowry's 1994 medal winner, The Giver. It's a dystopia about a community in which there is no war, no pain, and no conflict, but also no color, no emotion, and your job is picked for you. Teenage Jonas is chosen for a special job, to be the receiver of memory. Jonas must spend time with The Giver, an old man who gives Jonas all the memories from before things became safe and boring, including seeing color and feeling pain. But Jonas also learns what it means when people are released from the community. They are killed. When Jonas discovers his baby brother Gabe is going to be released by his own father, Jonas kidnaps the baby and tries to escape the community. Can he make it? This adaptation is by NetNav Productions in San Antonio, Texas.
I understand, son. Something, though, seems to be troubling you. It, it's nothing, sir. It, it really is. Tell me anything. I understand, thank you. Well, my father is going planning to release a four we've been caring for for a couple of years now. We've been caring for him for several years now, ever since I started training with you. I see a child. My daughter, Rosemary, she also applied to be released to elsewhere. Uh, I see. I, I just wish I could see it. No fair. <sighs> lie back. What? Trust me, lie back. Try to relax. Fantastic acting and cinematography and soundtrack on that one. And I thought it was really cool how it concentrated on one pivotal scene that somehow also tells the story of the whole book. Really intense with superior production values. The next movie is based on Minder Dejong's 1955 Newbery Honor book, Along Came a Dog, which tells the story of a friendship between a little red hen and a homeless dog who appoints himself as her protector. But the dog's efforts to help are misunderstood by the hen's owner, Joe, who had the scarring experience of having his precious flock of chickens be eaten by a pack of bad dogs. Can this good dog earn Joe's trust? This movie is done in amazing stop motion by Lily of Chicago. Good morning, chickens. Welcome to spring. Who's going to come out first? <laughs> oh no! Little red hen, your toes have fallen off. They must have frozen over winter. Alright, well, the rest of you, get outside. Who are you? Well, I won't be having any dogs around here. Not since a wild pack of them killed my entire red flock of chickens last year, leaving only her. Come on, get in the car.
Hey boss! Hey Joe! Listen, I know it's your day off, but my mare's giving birth. I need you to come to the farm right now. Sure thing, boss. I'll be over in a minute. And bring the bourbon! Will do. Now, if I leave you alone with the flock and they see you don't have toes, they'll peck you to death for being different. Oh, I know. That'll protect you. Little red hen? Oh no, they got you. You again? You have horrible timing. I know it wasn't you, but the little red hen was killed last night. Come on. Little red hen, you're alive? And I have a day off today. You know, if we could clean out that barn and get up and running into a big chicken coop, I could start my own poultry farm. I wouldn't have to work at the big farm anymore. Is this a crossbow? All right, girl, time to go inside. Girl? <sighs> you know, I really wish you'd wait for me at night instead of in the morning. That way I could bring you inside and you'd be safe. You finally did it. You actually killed my little red hen. I'm glad you ran into the barn and died, you old fool. It serves you right. What I don't understand is what would scare you enough in broad daylight to do that. That dog. You have some nerve coming back here. I bet you scared the rooster so you could eat my little red hen yourself. I'm sorry. You seem to be a good dog, and I might have kept you, but I just can't forgive you for that. I need to go to town to get electrical wiring for the barn anyway, and you'll never find your way back from there. Come on. away when he was attacking her and now you saved her from the pterodactyls i was so wrong how didn't i see it come on now all of you we're going home you too dog come on
That movie had it all. Elaborate stop-motion animation, tight script, expressive voiceover performances, and a great soundtrack. I think that first song was When a Man Loves a Chicken to the tune of When a Man Loves a Woman. Nice. The battle scenes were really good too, complete with fake blood, and you can totally understand the story even if you haven't read the original book. The last movie we'll feature today is based on a Newbery winning book of poetry, Nancy Willard's 1982 medal winner, A Visit to William Blake's Inn, Poems for Innocent and Experienced Travelers. Here, Nigel, Simone, Fletcher, Otto, and Hansel of Tacoma, Washington adapt one of the poems from the book, Blake Leads a Walk on the Milky Way. He gave silver shoes to the rabbit and golden gloves to the cat and emerald suspenders to the tiger and me and boots of iron to the rat. He inquired, Is everyone ready? The night is uncommonly cold. We'll start on our journey as children, but I fear we will finish it old. He hurried us to the horizon, where morning and evening meet. The slippery stars went skipping under our hapless feet. I'm terribly cold, said the rabbit. My paws are becoming quite blue. And what will become of my right thumb while you admire the view? The stars, said the cat, are abundant and falling on every side. Let them carry us back to our comforts. Let us take the stars for a ride. I shall garland my room, said the tiger, with a few of these emerald lights. I shall give up sleeping forever. I, sh I said, I shall never part day from night. The rat was sullen, he grumbled. He ought to have stayed in his bed. Let's gather thy fuel and heaven. We'll never endure, he said. Blake gave a silver horn to the rabbit, and a golden cape to the cat, and an emerald drum to the tiger and me, and a handful of dirt to the rat. What an incredible movie! It really found the beauty in the poem and reflected it so well. And that was the 2022 Best of the Best online screening of the 92nd Newberry Film Festival. Thank you to my co-host Keir Graff, and thank you to the Exile in Bookville bookstore in Chicago who let us shoot our opening skit there. In particular, Javier Ramirez who played John Newberry. And thanks to Chris, Elise, Heather, Domingo, Lucy, and Ingrid who helped with singing the opening song. And most of all, thank you to all the filmmakers who made these movies, and the teachers and parents and mentors who helped them along. I hope this show inspires everyone to make a movie for next year. Anyone can do it. Adult help is okay. Movies are due in January 2023, but you can start working on them now, and you can turn them in anytime. You can find complete details about the film festival, including tips on how to make your own movies, at www.90secondnewberry.com. Thank you, and good night.